Hello again, everyone. This is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com. And uh, it's been a while since I've had a project update for you. I want to share this one. Let's get to it. All right, what do we have here? Uh, as you can see, it's a, it's a green submarine. This is a uh, a German Type 212 done up in Italian livery. Uh, neat little boats. These are air independent propulsion submarines. And uh, some notable design characteristics of these boats. Obviously, you have a very modern fared shape and uh, the X tail rudders in the back. This is a great size. This is 196th scale. And as such, it is absolutely perfect for use in a submarine uh, or in a swimming pool, I should say. And I'll have some video of that very shortly during the testing that I took earlier today. Uh, it is a ton of fun because it has such tight turning radius and exceptional response to pitch control. It's also a quick little submarine as well. But I want to show you a little bit more about the boat. Uh, how it's set up, how it's powered, and uh, for the new owner, what you need to do to get it ready for the pond. All right, here is our boat. Uh, it's going to give you a little bit better idea of the size. Um, I don't know the actual measurement of it off the top of my head, but you can see that it is travel sized for your convenience. Very easy to transport. All of these uh, masts and periscopes fully removable. They just pop out the top. They are friction fit. The entire unit is powered by a uh, two inch sub driver. Uh, and this is set up with a 75 megahertz six channel micro receiver, a uh, magnetic on off switch in the battery compartment. There's a 1500 milliamp um, two cell lithium polymer battery that powers everything. And uh, you can see the servo outputs in the back there. We've got our uh, basically horizontal and vertical rudder controls. And then sticking out the top there, kind of shaped like an L, is how the dive planes on the sail, the fair water planes, are actuated. So let's take a look at how this boat is accessed. There's a single screw Phillips head stainless steel bolt in the back there, that just comes out. And then the top lifts off. We'll set that right there. You can see uh, this was uh, done with a really aggressive uh, Z cut. I'm not entirely sure why the original builder decided to cut it way back here, but uh, that is how it is basically just slips on that lip keeps it in place and then it's bolted down in the back of the boat and I'm going to show this to you the internal linkages here is the uh, the linkage for the dive planes and you can see those actuating as I move them forward and back just like that so it takes the output from the back uh, and transfers it up vertically into the sail up at the top there Okay, installation of the cylinder. Super easy. Basically, there is a nylon dog bone in here that transfers power from the output shaft to the propeller. I'm just gonna slip that in place, put it in the coupler in the back there. Then if we undo our Velcro, we can now drop the cylinder in place. There's a little pin in the bottom that keeps it locked into place. And then we can just tighten up our Velcro. Now the whole thing is locked into place. If we look in the uh, back here, we've got these magnetic linkages and if I can pop them up, they just jumped right into place there. Now they're all locked in and ready to go. My battery compartment is uh, sealed up. The battery is Connected, we have a six channel radio uh, operating on 75 megahertz. I'm gonna turn that on. Now we're gonna take a magnet 
and we're going to swipe it over that on off switch. We saw our outputs jump there a little bit and I'm just going to move them around so you can see all of them going. So to move left and right, those are your deflections and then up and down. And all of those controls are on the right stick of the transmitter. We got our throttle nice and smooth. You can see a little water flipping off there. It's still drying out from earlier. Uh, and then we've got our uh, bow, or our bow planes, our fair water planes, right there. And uh, this is a gas ballast boat, which means basically um, in order to blow the ballast tanks, you need to fill up this little gas um, reservoir in the front. And the procedure for that is fairly simple. We're just going to screw this down. We're going to press this down tightly seals up, it fills up the uh, canister in the front there. Now, if you really want to get a good charge on that, as you're holding it down, you're actually going to hit the blow cycle on your ballast tank. It's going to allow the gas to cycle through. You get more liquid into it. But for these purposes, it is now charged up and ready to go. Ballast is on channel five on the back, which is the left-hand side. To dive, we hit down, makes sense opens up the vent in the top of the ballast tank, air escapes, water fills, down it goes. Move it the other way and listen, it burps out, a little burp of gas fills up the um, ballast tank with air, dispelling the water out the bottom of the cylinder. Other things to note, um, this is the test tube to check for leaks. And that basically lays right next to the boat. And then we've got the output here. This is our receiver antenna. And we're just gonna loop that around out of the way as well, making sure that there's no chance of it getting wrapped up in the propeller shaft. That would be bad. All that done, basically, we just take our hull, drop it on top, making sure that no cables are being trapped or anything like that. Um, get all of our alignment tabs set up and we drop the hull into place. Now I'm just gonna hold it there because in theory, this uh, linkage for the bow planes connected. Let's see if they did. There we go. So basically, once I tighten down that stainless bolt in the back, this is ready for the pond. Now, when you're all done, obviously, everything is done in reverse order. Now, just as a tip for any RC Mariner who has a watertight cylinder, I, you'll notice that I said everything is done in the reverse order, and that includes the portions where you're taking the battery in and out and opening up the rear of the cylinder. So, just so that you know, every time when you're done operating your boat, you are to open up the forward battery compartment. Um, just pops off like that. We're gonna pull the battery out and disconnect it. That magnetic switch does draw a small amount of power. You do not want to completely drain that battery. You also want to take the cylinder out and move the equipment tray out opening up that part of the cylinder because even if you got one or two drips of water in the cylinder during operation you do not want to let it sit in there for weeks and weeks until you run your boat again so after every time you run your boat open up all parts of the cylinder let it dry out completely so there you go 196 scale type 212 uh, italian version rc submarine uh, this was originally built by a very talented uh, builder out of Australia, and I basically just went through it completely, overhauled it, uh, tested it out, and got it prepped and ready for the new owner. So I cannot take full credit for this boat. Um, that particular gentleman deserves all the credit. 
uh, Scott Terry out of Australia. And uh, he had a lot of other boats that I had represented here for a while too. And you've seen those in some of my other videos. For now, I am gonna let you go. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm gonna leave you a little underwater footage of this boat during her big trials in my swimming pool. So, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDryDocks.com. Love to hear from you if you have questions or comments. Bob at NautilusDryDocks.com. Check out the website. Make sure you see all of the uh, tips, tricks, resources, kits, parts, and components that we have there for you. As always, thanks for joining me, and we will catch you.